Welcome back to the Crochet Crowd. So it's my friends at Yarnspirations.com. Today is the Fading Shades Knit Hat. I've never done Intarsia before, so this is new for me. It's an easy level, they claim. And we need to begin to start with the brim and work our way up. Now the pattern stated here, and I've, I've checked with the design team at Yarnspirations, and it says, use a five and a half millimeter or a US9 double pointed knitting needles to start and then switch over to a six millimeter US 10 to do the body of the hat all the way to the end. So I questioned because I'm so new at knitting and people are online saying just use the circulars that I went to my local yarn shop. I have two really great little yarn shops uh, close to me and I've been trying these small little tips by Likey. I'm not even sure that's the right name uh, for saying it, but short little tips and just using a 16 millimeter uh, wire that I can do that. Now the problem with using other ones that I normally have been using, I've been using Knitter's Pride, is that even though the wire is kind of the same, the length of the needles are much longer. And so therefore you not only have that wire to play with, but you also have the length of the needles and the hat will not be able to stretch in this formation in order to do it. Okay, so what I want to do for myself to make it easier, and I did check with the art inspirations, is that I can start with the wire immediately. And then as we get then to the body of the hat, I just have to change these out to a six millimeter and just change the tips over and then continue to do the brim. Eventually though, I will need those double point needles in order to do the brim, or sorry, the top of the hat. That's a, a no brainer. That's something that we have to decide. And so when I originally started this, just as off camera, I did the double points before I understood this completely. So when I, when you see this again in this tutorial, you're going to see me then knitting right onto the circulars to do the brim of the hat, to do the body of the hat. And then we'll be back to the double points in a different size uh, in order to finish it at the end. So here on the pattern, let's begin. We are going to use one ball of Karen Color Rama Ogo. I've separated the ball already, so it has those colors. So there's five colors. And so I have one here. This is going to be the brim. If you want to do it in double points, you can. And I'm just going to do the circulars, as I already mentioned. So you can see that the, here's the color breakdown in the order from what it appears. Again, you can decide what you want to do. This one here is the blue one, if you want that. So I'm going to immediately start on my circulars using the five and a half millimeter, a US 9 and we're going to cast on a total of 68 stitches. I'm going to assume that you know how to cast on and uh, just be conscientious of the length of the wire. This one's only 16 inches with small tips so it actually will work out. Let's begin to cast on. So let's begin to cast on. I'm going to create a slip knot. I'm not going to do a long tail cast on but if you prefer it, that's up to you. You can decide what cast on that you most like. These are smaller tips, so I find, actually, I thought it was gonna be hard, harder to use them. I originally bought um, just a couple of these and I realized I liked it, so I bought a whole kit so that I have all the sizes with me. So it was cheaper to buy the kit. So we're going to begin immediately and we're going to start with the cast on process. I'm going to do a twist and transfer. So I'm going to pretend I'm going to knit stitch. So just knit. And when I get this done, I'm just gonna come back up, rotate and put my needle underneath the one that I just made and collect it so it causes it to have a twist and slide on. So then you're going to twist and transfer and you need a total of 68 stitches altogether in order to make this work. If you are going to do the double points it's stated that the first two needles will have 24 stitches each and the last one is a total of 20 and that will give you to the number of 68 as well. So I do highly recommend the circular would be a lot easier for this formation of this hat, but you decide what's going to work for you because who's the artist? You are. So you decide whatever is your tools of choice. And I'll be back at 68 stitches done on the needles. So I now have a total of 68 stitches here on here. So it, you notice that it didn't come all the way around. So what I have to do is gently, but also with some a bit of force, is just to kind of stretch it and make sure it goes all the way to the other side. You will notice in the first round that we do, everything is going to stretch perfectly, but it's always the first row like this that is always going to be questionable. Okay, so it should go all the way to the other side. So when you go to lay this back down, you want to lay it so that it makes sense. So when you lay it down, 
that they're all facing in the same direction. Just put your tail in the center and just kind of look at it and does it all follow? And if it's wrapped around in a weird kind of way, then you know that it's twisted. So because I'm right-handed, I want to change my hand over. So I want to flip this completely upside down because I'm right-handed, I want the yarn coming from this side, not this side. So I wanna flip it upside down. At this particular point, we can use two things. We can use this tail here to tell us when we've gone all the way around, or we can use a stitch marker. This here is a stitch marker. So I want you to place it on the right one here where the yarn is sitting and just place it over top. This is never just put part of your project as just always resting onto a needle. And as you get all the way back around, you just transfer it from one needle to the other just to keep it into position. We're then going to start and it says K2, P2. So we're gonna knit two, purl two. So we're going to do a knit stitch for the first one. So just go right in. And because we're joining it for the very first time, you want to put it into your hands and do a knit stitch for the very first one. And when you do this, this is gonna cause the two ends to join each other. And after you've got this done and off the needle, okay, just, it's gonna be a little bit fussy at first. After we get this round done, it'll be a lot looser. I want you to tug on it to take any of the, the flex out. And then you're gonna knit the next one. And it's the second one, whenever you do something like this, is the really the final time that you get to pull on it to keep everything nice and tight. So you just now knit the first two. So this is going to go in a constant circle, and as you get all the way around, it's going to slide down here, come all the way back up to your needle on the other side. So you have to get in the, in the practice of pushing down this side, and it will naturally push all the way back around. You're now going to purl the next two. So bring the yarn in front between the needles and purl. We have basic tutorials here on YouTube for these kind of simple stitches of the knit stitch and purl, just so that you know, it's nothing special. It's just the same concept. So what I have to do is that I have to be a little bit patient on this first round to getting around, and then everything else should be a lot smoother in the rounds to come. So you're gonna purl the two, move the yarn back and knit two, and get used to pushing this away. And you can notice that it's got a lot more stretch than it did. That's because you're already starting to do the knit and the purl. Okay, so this round is gonna be a little bit fussy. And if you think you're the only one that's going through it, you're not, it's everybody. So I want, so that was a knit. So you're gonna purl two, knit two, purl two, knit two. And the very last um, stitches before the stitch marker here will be a purl two. And that's just a matter of keeping in the cycle of the pattern. So please go all the way around using those two stitches. So I'm coming back around, I can tell by the tail, if you didn't use a stitch marker, but I have two left and those two are going to be a purl stitch in order to keep in balance with the pattern. Okay, so it's knit two, purl two all the way around. So you'll end up with purl two as your last two. Um, my casting on process in the first row is usually a dog's breakfast. So um, it's uh, something I'm still learning. So once you get all the way around, I'm going to get ready for a knit two and transfer your stitch marker over so that you can keep an eye on that. And then you just immediately start, see the gapping space, that's normal. So you just wanna start with knit two, purl two, knit two, purl two. And when you're doing this, what's gonna happen is that it's going to start lining up like this, okay, to a rib stitch that you'll have because the stitch work is always gonna be the same on top of each other. So we started off with knit two, purl two, and so we're continuing to knit two, purl two, so the stitches will look just like I just showed you. So what you have to do is you have to go in a continuous rotation, okay, over and over and over until the work measures approximately two inches, okay? So I'm not gonna tell you about how many rows and it doesn't tell you that, and just get used to just pushing this around, and now that the first round is done, you'll see that it's a lot more easier to do, at least for me hopefully for you, and that's something that you can do. So please continue to knit two, purl two, all the way and continue to do that over and over and over for the rounds until you get approximately two inches 
just like you see. And then what I'm going to do is bring up this project that I've been working on behind the scenes. And I'm gonna transfer these uh, double points. Um, it says to use a bigger size double point of a six millimeter size US 10. But what I'm going to do is that I'm allowed, I contacted Yarn Inspirations, that I'm gonna transfer this over in real time with you on camera to doing a six millimeter, but in the circulars. So in this particular case, if that was to happen, you can pull these back. If this is the type that you have, you can undo these. Okay, there's a tool that it, it comes with in order to unlock it. So you wanna do that. So if it comes out too easy, then you have to be afraid. So you can just undo the tips and then just uh, keep the wire and then put a new tip on and then you have the new sizes. So that's completely up to you on how you wanna do that. You may be interested, but the tool is just something that goes through like a pin and you can put it through each side and then just leave that. There's stoppers that are included in this particular kit, but there's a hole and you just shove it in the hole and you hold on and you twist whatever direction that it's gonna come loose on. So you use that tool to tighten it up on itself as well. So these are more of a higher end thing, but I think they're worth the money. So what I'm going to do is use the same wire, but I'm gonna transfer it over, but assume that you got two inches of your work done, just like um, you see over here. And that's something that you can decide. So I'll be right back in a moment. So we're back here on the pattern and what we have to consider now is that we have to follow this chart. So we're gonna start off down here. So you can see the first two rows are going to be the cream color that we've been working with in this particular sample um, that we have here. So if you were doing the purple, then you continue the purple just for two more rounds. And it is gonna be now the just the knit stitch, then the ribbing is completely gone. So you're gonna do that over for two rounds. And then in number three, we're gonna start the intarsia work where it's gonna start looking polka dotish. Okay, so then you have this, so it's gonna be the first stitch is this color, next one is this one, and you keep repeating that over and over. And then in the next round, you have the, it's reversed on which order that they're in. And then the fifth round is reversed once again, like number three, and then you have three rounds here of just the solid color. So it's a neat idea that you can have this. It's not too much of a, um, a commitment on how many rounds you go, but you are going to do intarsia from that point. So let's uh, begin and I'm going to start with row number, round number one. And then once I get to number three, I'll show you how that's done. And then you can do the rest on your own all the way to number 27. So I'm going to begin the first round and instead of using double points of a six millimeter size US 10, because we're now, this was five and a half US nine, I'm going to use this needle instead and I'm going to just knit then all the way around, just the knit stitch. So as I finish off a needle here, it'll empty out and I'll just put it aside and use it another time in another project and just continue then to knit all the way around, collecting them onto your circulars. Um, I've been told that it's actually better in this particular format to use the circulars. It's a lot easier than the double points. So if you have that option, it's great, but you'll be back to the double points in six millimeter US 10 once we have to start doing the reduction uh, for the top of the hat. And that's something that you can never get away with okay in in this kind of format so just for this round just knit stitch all the way around collecting your stitches and if you're using the double points it's still the same thing just make sure that you've increased your your knitting needle size to a us 10 size six millimeter i'll be right back at the end of this round so as you're finishing one needle you would either jump to another needle if you're doing the double point but in this particular format i'm just keeping it on the wire and then you can retire that double point for another time. Okay, so that's done. Out and just continue to slide down the wire and continually knit stitch your way around round number one. So I'm coming all the way around and the sounds of that annoying on the table <laughs> needles is done, thank God. And I'm coming to the very last one as I go around. So that needle is out. What I want to do at this particular point is that I just kind of want to stretch things, make it look good, and I want to come back and just push the rest of it to this side here. Just kind of push back. And I'm going to put in a stitch marker so that I can know that this is the begin, uh, the first of the stitch. So round one is officially complete on that chart, so you can check it off. Let's do round number two. In round number two, it's also just a knit stitch. Okay, so go all the way around. The rest, this is all knit stitch right up into the top of the hat. So there's no more purling involved. 
The only difference is that you're going to have your Intarsia coming up in the next round, which we'll cover. I don't even know how to do it at this point, but I can always look it up, which I'm going to. So just knit stitch all the way around for round number two. I'm just coming all the way around. My stitch marker is telling me that is true. And I'm going to transfer my stitch marker and we're gonna start round number three. So I just gotta look up some free resources on yarnspirations.com on how to do intarsia, and I'll be right back in a moment. So now we're gonna start round number three. So we're gonna start off with the new color and then continue the same color. So new color, same color, new color, same color. You'll do that all the way around. Then in round number four, it's opposite, and then five is opposite, it's like number three again, and then the last three are the brand new color only, and so then the white will be ending on the fifth, uh, after the fifth. So it's really easy to do this concept and let's go through it. So the first thing that we need to do is that we need to grab whatever color that you wanna transition to. Okay, I'm just keeping it as per the pattern. Now you don't wanna create a slip knot. That's one thing I've learned in um, knitting is that using a crochet, I create a slip knot because I'm, I'm paranoid. Here, you don't wanna do that because the slip knot can sink to the outside of the project and then people can see it and then like, oh my God, look at her. <laughs> uh, you know what I'm saying? So what I wanna do is that I wanna loop on this to get it started. And so the first one is the new color. So we're gonna just loop it and let it hold. We're gonna secure the loose end. Make sure you leave it long enough that you can use a tapestry needle to be able to secure that in later. And you just wanna knit with that one. And it's called floating. And what we're doing is that we're not, we're just letting that sink now and behind. And you're gonna grab the other one. So you have to get some kind of rhythm in your hands, okay, on how you wanna change between the two. You may wanna leave the balls in a completely different position so that it's easy just to grab one versus the other. I find that with uh, crochet is that when there's two yarns in play, if they're side by side on the table, it's really hard to uh, pick up the one. But if they're coming from a different angle, it's just easier. So the next one, you're gonna be back to the original. Okay, and then the next one, you're back to this one. Okay, so once we get beyond that tail, it'll be easier to grab. So you're just gonna do your knit stitch and only use the color that you want. So it's every other one is the opposite color. Okay, so that when the yarn is not in play, it's just in behind floating. So you'll see floaters that are in behind. So this may take you a little bit of practice to get used to it. I've never done anything like this before. So this is uh, brand new for me. I'm actually doing my first attempt on camera, if you can imagine that sadness. <laughs> um, but you know, the fact that I can do it on camera with you and I'm really not sweating it out. Um, I want, I'm gonna get rid of the tail after about the three rounds are done. The reason for it is I want to be able to secure that tail into the same coloring concept. Um, if I secure it too soon, then what happens is that um, I feel like it's not the right thing to do. So just let it hold. It won't fall out on you and uh, everything is good to go. So please just go, continue going all the way around, just changing your yarn colors. If you wanna change the configuration in any way, you are the artist at the end of the day, so you can do that as well. So continue to do intarsia, and if you've never done it before, congratulations, this is something new for you as it is for me. And I'll be right back. So a few tips that I'm noticing is that I'm letting the yarn fall out of my hands, so it's not in my hands like it normally would be. Again, if you have better ways, by all means, but I'm just letting it drop as soon as I'm done a color, drop, and then pick up the other one. I was sitting back on this on the, my chair. So once the uh, tension goes back to the yarn ball, you can find it's really easy to grab one or the other and continue to alternate between the two colors, as I mentioned. This is still round number three. So how I'm avoiding the tango now that I'm getting into this thing. Uh, so I can see this is coming from this direction. This is coming from this direction. So when I go to do the white, I'm just picking up and I'm doing the white. And when I drop it, I'm kind of dropping it just here. But what I want to do is that I want to grab this one here underneath. This is the next one. And it's preventing it from untangling. But when I get rid of this one, I'm intentionally just tossing it out of the way and then grabbing this one. So I'm trying to keep the one that is leading in this direction in front. So I just let it get fall, grab this one. And when I'm done with it, I just toss it forward. You see? So that's something that I can handle. Who would have thought, eh? Yeah, so hopefully that helps you to know.
So I'm coming all the way around and I'm gonna show you something else that I noticed. So I'm gonna to toss that back and the last one should be white in order to keep the consistency. So that's gonna be great and transfer your stitch marker. So because I was, I'm still new at this as you know. So when I first started this round, you're going to notice is that the strands when I did it are actually kind of just really wonky, wonky here. That's because I'm not being consistent. So once I came to the idea that um, I know how to toss the yarns and do it in the same way, it looks a lot tidier in the back end. Oh, I'm having major deja vu. So this is a neat concept in order to do that. So if that matters to you on the inside, then that's something that uh, you can do. So the next round, number uh, four, is opposite to what we just did. So when you go to start the new one, you're just gonna do this one and you'll start with your white. Okay, so you just immediately just grab your white. It's already in play anyway. And then your next one is that other color. And this is opposite to what's in the row below. And you're just gonna do this row and this is uh, row number four or round number four. So, and welcome back. And I got all of this done. I was so shocked on how fast this actually process was. When I look at stuff and not being a, an avid knitter, I look at that like, oh my God, can I do it? And what I was so shocked is that this went so much faster than I ever anticipated that I'm pretty excited about it. So we're currently on circular needles. If you stayed on your double points um, as it recommended in the pattern, you don't have to worry about transitioning back to the double points, but you are going to need to. So it's not something that you can avoid uh, with this particular project because the top of the hat has to get smaller and the cord is a certain length. So let's talk about where we are in the pattern. So right now we're about to hit shaping of the top of the hat next. So it says K15, so we're gonna knit the next 15 stitches and then knit the next two together. So this is going to happen a total of four times. So what I wanna do is that I wanna do one re the first time and then the second time and the third and the fourth. So what we're going to do is that each time we do a new repeat, we're going to place the circular onto these. So we just have to be able to transfer it as we go. So we're gonna knit it right into position back to the four points or to the double point. So right where I am, I just finished off the last one, okay? And the stitch marker is here. I'm going to place the stitch marker on the second one in on the double point because if I leave it on the end of a double point, it's just gonna slide off. So I'm going to just do this and we need to knit the next 15 using the double point. So don't worry about this second needle and just kind of push things uh, around so that the second needle here just is kind of being off to the side and we're gonna transfer on. So using the new needle, okay, you are going to then just knit. And as you do double points, the first time you put onto the double point, you need to pull tight, okay? Don't think that you don't, okay? And it's the second one always in a double point that you need to pull the tightest. You can't pull any tighter once the second's in. So count to 15 and meet me back here in a moment. Okay, once you get to the 15, the next two have to be used as knit two together. So instead of just going into one, you are going to go into the second one and the first one at the same time, and that's a knit two together. It's a little bit fussy at first, so get in so that you're collecting two. Wrap the yarn like this, okay? and then you are just going to pull off. That's gonna be the end of this needle. So now what you're going to do is you're gonna start a new needle and do the next 15, and then after the 15 are done, put the next two together as a knit two together, and then get a new needle, and you should have four needles back onto your work by the time you get back all the way around. Please do that, and I'll be right back. So I've come all the way back around, I can tell, because I'm out of this needle. So I'm gonna take my circulars out, put them in a safe spot so I don't lose them, and therefore everything is good. So I wanna make sure that all four are on, and it's roughly in the middle, so it do nothing slides off the edge, and now we're ready for the second round, and here we go. So we're going to begin, it's Saturday uh, afternoon, Daniel's on a tractor if you're hearing grinding in the back. So I'm gonna move this needle down so I can access it and this yarn can stay where it is, okay? And I do need to move, I'll put my stitch marker in this time so I, I forgot last time, but because I was going all the way around on the changing over, it was easy to tell. So I want to knit the first six and then K2 the next, or K2 together the next two. So we're going to jump over, so we need that extra needle. And remember what I said when you 
jump needle. So you gotta pull tight on the first one. So after it's done, I pull tight. And then it's the second one that I pull tight again, but at the second one, you can't pull tight any further beyond the second. So you gotta make sure that you just snug up on it, make sure it's nice and tight. Now that's two of six. So you're gonna say three, four, five, and six. And then the next two are together. So put those two together. Okay, good. And now the next six. So you got one, two, three, four, five, six. And then the last two are gonna to be together. So if you're doing it in the same way that you see on camera, you don't necessarily have to count it uh, as, as hard, but you can decide to do as if you want. Once you get there, change over your and keep on going around and I'll be right back here at the end of number two. So like a genius that I am, I forgot to put my stitch marker in. So I wanna put in a stitch marker just to temporarily hold this thing so I can see it when I come back around. So I'm just gonna grab a little crochet hook and I just wanna put in a, something here that will indicate when I'm back around. Just a strand that will hang out that I can just pull out easily. So when I see the strand coming back around, I'll know that I've gone around in a circle. So um, ideally it would have been nice to put on those stitch markers, but you know, I'm not a genius today. Okay, so now I've just finished round number two. Round number three, we're going to do K5 and then two together. So I have my stitch marker now in place. So I don't have to worry about moving it every time. And uh, it's just helpful. And so we're going to jump needles like we had been all the way around. Getting used to these double points has been uh, quite a challenge for me, but it's just a matter of not giving up and uh, just continuing to, to do that. So make sure it's on the second one that you do give it that final pull and you're only doing five in a row this time. So three, four, and five, and then the next two are together. a little tight and uh but you don't want it too loose either so it's just a matter of being patient with it and then you'll put the next five in and then two together and again in the configuration if you look at it it's the one before the end here before jumping to the next needle go all the way around this is round number three okay so we're now going to go on to the fourth round and just a matter of getting in so this time i can just explain it to you the first four are knit and then the next two are together four knit and then the next two together and you can do that all the way around for round number four so we're here and ready to start round number five you can see that the top is getting smaller and smaller that's why you couldn't use that cord so we're going to begin number five i bet you know what to do if you're looking at the instructions is knit the first three and then k2 together knit the next three k2 together please do that for number five so we're now moving on to number six, and you're just gonna start, I'll tell you what it is. Knit the first two, and then put the next two together, knit the first two, and knit the two together. Please do number six. Okay, number seven, here we go, and you're going to knit the first one, put the next two together, knit the first one, put the next two together, and do number seven in the same way. We're almost closing at the top. Okay, we're now finished number seven. Number eight is the final round. You're gonna to knit two together, knit two together, and knit two together all the way around. Please do that, and then I'll show you how to finish off. And now we're here at the end. So we have a total of eight stitches left, and so what we have to do is grab the yarn that is leading to the yarn ball long enough that you can capture those loops in and be able to secure them. So just put your tapestry needle onto the end of the yarn and carefully, this is where you finished. So you're gonna start with the first ones that you normally would have if you've started a new round. And you just want to collect the stitches that are left. Just slide in. And I would put the yarn in before pulling that needle out, just to confirm that you're in the right spot, then pull out. This will prevent that from unraveling. Okay, so be patient. So you're just going to jump all the way around, collecting all of your loops, and then do that, and I'll be right back. And removing the final needle out. So you're going to be left with a small hole. So using the tail, just pull securely, and that will pull the top completely shut. 
I like to be able to go in a cross formation. So where it's coming out, I will go directly across and then back over. And then I'm going to go on an angle and go in the other direction. So I'm going in and then popping out on an angle and then, and then directly across from that point. Now I'm going to stick the needle down through the top of the hat. And I've been securing in my loose ends as I've been going, except for the final one. And I'm just gonna pull this inside out. Make sure that when you pull it, there's nothing left on the other side. And what I'm going to do is just secure it to the inside. So don't stick it all the way through your project. Just stick it through some fibers in the back here and let it tie shut. And then I would take the tail, once you have that tied, I would take the tail and just weave it in some fibers. Do not go so deep that you're going through the project. Through experience, I know that's not all the way through. Now, that's it. So if you wanna do a, a pom-pom, you can just hand make one. We have tutorials available for that if you wish, or you can get a pre-made one and just attach it to the top. If you are gonna sell something like this at a craft show, then what I would highly recommend is that you put the pom-pom on with um, uh, a bow tie. So what happens is somebody says, I don't really like the, the, the pom-pom. You can undo the bow tie, take the pom-pom off and keep it for another time. Or if they want to wash it another time, they can do that as well. So I'm a pom-pom lover. I just think it's really cute. And that's something that you can do, or you can leave as is too. You are the artist at the end of the day. And this was the Fading Shades Knit Hat by Yarnspirations.com.